we'll be making these today. Well, specifically, we'll be making these with the point on path expression and a couple more other expressions. So sit back, relax, and it should be easy. For simplicity, I'll just stick a white solid layer here as the background. To make the mask, I simply type something in my comp. For this demo, I'll move the dots from an exclamation mark to a question mark. Duplicate the text, place them side by side. Right click the text layer, create, then create masks from text. You get a new solid layer with masks exactly the same shape of your original text. And your text layer's visibility is toggled off. Do the same with your other text layer. I usually copy all the masks into one layer so it's less layers to deal with. Create a new solid layer and then you can copy the masks onto this layer one by one. You can press the shortcut M to reveal all masks in a layer. Right click on the mask, you can rename them or the shortcut is to press enter. It's good to keep things organized. You can also click this color icon to change your mask outline color. Again, this will help in the long run, especially if you end up dealing with tens or even hundreds of layers and masks. Once I've changed the name and colors, I copy everything into one solid layer. Then you can select all the original text and their mask layers and toggle on shy and click this shy button to hide them away. They're not gone forever, just hit them from your timeline for now. Right click here to select shape layer. Bring in the left shape. You can't see it yet as it has no color, so click the arrow again and select fill. Change the color and size as you see fit, then bring in a group. Drag your group property above the ellipse and fill, then drag those two into the group. Now you should have one expandable group with transforms in it. Make sure your layer position is set to zero and zero. Hold down Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac, then left click the stopwatch before position. We'll add some expressions here. So first, we'll get the position of the point where we want to start. We'll set a variable name called P start, then pick with the upper part of the mask of our exclamation mark. Then we use the internal expression to get a point position on the path. You can click this small arrow to bring in the expression. It should be in path property, then point on path. We also need to tell the point where to end. So we'll set another variable called P end and pick with the upper part of the question mark. Also bring in the point on path expression. To see what each line does, you can use double forward slash to comment out the expressions. It's just like JavaScript. You see the change of the point's position as I comment out each line. Next, I'll bring in a no object and call it control. This is where I'll put all the slider controls. If you have not used slider controls before, I have a playlist explaining how to use them. You can check the link in the corner. You may also lock this effects control panel so you won't click away. Bring in a slider control, change the name here. Mine is just called control again. Now back in your expression window, we're going to link a variable to this slider control. To see the animation, we use the linear expression. This line basically says, we'll like to map the control from 0 to 100. When it's 0, we'll like it at the P start point, And when it's 100, I would like it to end at P end. And AE would just work out the movement in between. Once we have this expression, we can animate the point with this slider. I'm also going to add a couple of keyframes to help me visualize it. It's sort of working now, but I would like the point to move from the top left corner. I can select this vertex on the mask, right click and select set first vertex. But the dot doesn't seem to move to this vertex. That is because currently we're telling the dot to set at the 0.5, also meaning 50% on the overall length of the path. If we change it to zero, meaning that the very first vertex of the path, we'll see the dot moves to the first vertex. Do the same with the question mark, right click and set first vertex. Now you can see the dot is moving as intended. Okay, that's one dot done. If I were going to create a second 
dot manually, I would copy this group and inside the position expression, change p start and p end. A more procedural approach is to use the group index value. And if I know that and I know how many groups there are in total, I'll be able to place points evenly on the path. Luckily, there are expressions to do that. First, I create a variable called p index, and you need to get it from this property dot property group. And in the round bracket, it should be two, then dot property index. This is to get the group index value. If it's group one, the index is one, group two, index is two, so on and forth. Then we need to get the total number of groups created in this shape layer. You can copy this expression on the screen. I also have it somewhere down below. Then I'm getting a third variable called p location. Essentially, this is the group index divided by total number of groups. So if there are 10 groups in total, the first group should be at the 10% point, second group at the 20% point. That's how we get points distributed evenly across the path. Place the values after percentage in both p start and p end. Now have Group 1 selected, press Ctrl or Command D to duplicate the dots. You can see the new dots are placed along the path. Scrub through the timeline to see the animation. For the lower half of the shape, if I move everything at once, it looks a bit boring to say the least. So I'm going to bring in some delay in the movements. The idea is to use the group index again to drive the delay. So if it's group 2, I would like a 0.2 second delay. If it's group 3, then 0.3 second of delay. Here I use the same code before. Well, I could have used the same variable, but to demonstrate this more clearly, let me call it index value. I also have a new variable called delay. It's basically the index value divided by 100. So we'll get fractions of a second as delay, not the whole second. Then a new variable called delay time. It's the current time minus the group index multiply a value set by another slider control. Finally, add value at time after my control variable. This will offset the movement by a value set in the round brackets. If I increase my multiplier, you'll see delayed movement on the second dot. And once this is set up, I could go ahead and press Ctrl or Command D to duplicate the group. The good thing about having all slider controls in one place, it gives you more flexibility to tweak your animation. So that's all about the points on path expression. If you're being daring, you can also add a wiggle transform to your groups and tweak the position value to give it a bit of movement. I've put everything in the demo project and a few other demos on my Gumbro page. Feel free to head over there and download the assets, obviously free of charge. That's all about this video. Please do hit the like button if you find it useful. For more videos like this, please subscribe and until next time, happy editing.